Hey, podcasters, welcome to the Thriving Dog Podcast again. I'm your host, Tim Berthold. Today on the show, we have Dr. Janet Rourke, also known as the Essential Oil Vet. She's the owner of Hill Country Mobile Veterinary Service in Austin, Texas, where she offers both traditional and complimentary vet services to her pet patients from the comfort of their own home. She first discovered the healing power of essential oils when she was battling physical and emotional struggles of her own. And after experiencing the life-changing benefits of essential oils, she wanted to let her pet patients know about all those benefits and felt that they deserve the same care. And so she went on a mission to educate all of us pet parents on the benefits and safety of using those essential oils. She has a few things going on in the digital space. You can join her membership group on Facebook at EO Vet Membership with Dr. Janet Rourke. That's R-O-A-R-K. Or follow her on Instagram at Essential Oil Vet. And of course, on her website at Essential Oil Vet, where she has tons of resources, including essential oils that you can buy right there through her website. So Dr. Janet, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Tim. I'm so excited to be here talking about two of my most favorite things in the whole world, animals and essential oils. I'm just so thrilled. Thank you so much. All right. Well, your energy is infectious, and I think our listeners will catch on too. So really quickly, can you take a, a minute to fill in anything I might have missed in that intro, and we'll get right into things. Yeah, no. Um, well, just that I'm like super nerdy. So um, I am a super nerd. I went to the University of Finley in Ohio, um, in Finley, Ohio for my undergrad. And I actually triple majored there in pre-veterinary medicine, equestrian studies, uh, which is horses, basically training horses and uh, biology. And I minored in chemistry. So I've been always been super in love with the sciences. And then I went to uh, vet school at Michigan State University. So I'm kind of a Midwesterner down in Texas now. Love it down here. The weather's been amazing. So other than that, um, that pretty much covers it. That's, that's kind of my, my background story for sure. Okay. Well, what about the uh, story of how you became a vet? Can you walk us through that? Oh my gosh. Okay. So whew, this might get a little intense just to warn you. Um, <laughs> so I was, I'm one of those people that like I've known I was wanted to be a veterinarian since I was five years old. So I actually remember being on the school bus in kindergarten, talking to one of my friends, and we talked about how we were going to both be veterinarians, and I was going to be a small animal veterinarian, and she was going to be a large animal veterinarian, and we were going to go into practice together. <laughs> so at a very young age, this was my dream, and it never, ever changed. So my dad actually worked for the Department of Natural Resources in Michigan, uh, for a veterinarian. So I got a lot of exposure to veterinary medicine, very young growing up, a lot of animals. We always had dogs and cats. And, you know, when I was 13, I got my first horse and grew up in the country. And so I was always catching frogs and um, <laughs> raising them in aquariums and all of the things. So I was, a, I was kind of an outdoorsy kid. So um, that being said, uh, when I went to got into um, high school, like my whole goal was to get into vet school, right? Even back then. And so I got, took all the advanced classes, the AP classes, tried to get straight A's, um, graduated fifth in my class in high school, um, took all the advanced science classes. Um, when I turned 16, I was able to uh, apply to work for the veterinarian in our very small town. Um, and they actually didn't need anyone, but I was like, oh, I'll do it for free. <laughs> and so I started volunteering at the veterinary hospital. Uh, quickly, they realized that, um, you know, I was a valuable employee and uh, hired me on part time while I was in high school. Um, so every day after school, I'd go, go to work at the vet veterinary hospital. I was striving my whole life, got into um, uh, undergrad, as I mentioned, triple majored there, um, did, got really, really good grades, did, did pretty well on the test that I had to do to get into vet school, got into Michigan State my first try, um, and I was just like striving, 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 right? So then when I um, graduated from Michigan State vet school, I like had reached like my lifelong dream of becoming a veterinarian, right? And I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, okay, so now, now what? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Um, and so I um, did a lot of 
pro bono work up in Michigan. Um, I lived in a very poor area in northern Michigan for a few years uh, where I did a lot of at-cost vaccines and and things like that. This was before I got into the whole world of kind of natural medicine and that sort of thing, but I've always been really interested in that. Um, and so then when we moved down to Texas, um, my husband and I, I started my practice down here in 2009. And um, throughout these couple of years, I was faced with a lot of stress, um, a lot of anxiousness, a lot of financial stress of having to, you know, be on my own and try and create a practice and all of this stuff. And it, it really started to weigh on me. And I started dealing with a lot of mental health problems, actually severe depression to the point where, and this is something that I don't know if you know this, Tim, but um, veterinarians really struggle with this as a, mm. as a, as a people group. So um, that mental health is, is something that veterinarians do struggle with. So next time you guys see a veterinarian, bring some cookies, treat them well. They might have had a, a hard client, the, the appointment right before you um, and you can make their lives a lot better. So, um, but anyways, I was really struggling with my own mental health to the point where I would, um, I actually had attempted suicide, uh, mm -hmm. actually five different times. So it was really a very dark time in my life. There was a lot of transition. I would go to work, still plug through. Um, and I was also suffering from a lot of health problems associated with the stress in my life, migraines, depression, um, uh, in, insomnia. Um, I started to see a doctor. Um, obviously my husband was like, please go see a doctor and, um, got on some medications and things like that. The medications, unfortunately, I had a lot of side effects. Um, and I suffered from every side effect listed on those medications. Mm -hmm. I'm just a really sensitive person to that kind of stuff. And so I ended up getting more medications for the side effects of the medications. And I was on at least five different prescriptions. Um, at the point in my journey where a friend of mine um, invited me to dinner and started talking to me about essential oils. And I just wanted some relief from the stress and from the headaches mainly because that was the most debilitating thing for me at that particular time. And um, she introduced me to these essential oils and I started using them on myself. And within 15 minutes of putting on um, this amazing tension blend, my headaches totally stopped and I didn't have to take any other additional med medications to get rid of my headaches. And so I was like, well, this is fascinating. So nerd that I am, I started researching it. And then I was like, wow, there's actually a lot of research out there about essential oils and how they affect cells and how they affect animals, how they affect people. And I started using them in my family and on my own animals. And then um, about six months later, after I had started doing all this research, I had one client um, say, hey, I don't want to use antibiotics. Is there something else we can try instead? And so I was like, well, there are some essential oils that do have antibacterial properties and can support the immune system. We can certainly try it. And if it doesn't work, we can always use antibiotics later. So we tried it and the animal really just improved significantly in an extremely short amount of time, shorter than what the antibiotics would have um, helped with and I never looked back. I'm like, I guess I use essential oils in my practice now. This is incredible. And I started just um, realizing there's a lot of bad information out there on the internet about essential oils and dogs and cats in particular. Um, so I started educating people online on Facebook uh, because that's where I was. <laughs> and, um, and it's kind of gone crazy since then. And, and I've just really enjoyed the journey. The cool thing is um, once I started with that particular oil, I was able to start using essential oils to help manage my mood and my, um, my emotions and even you know, help balance out the different um, levels of you know, neurotransmitters and things like that in, in, your, in your brain. Hmm. And so I was able to actually get off all of the prescription medications I was on slowly with my doctor's permission and we tapered them off and things like that. But I have been, you know, medication free for really over six years now. So, and, and I haven't had any relapses or anything like that. And anytime I start to feel down, which does still happen sometimes, um, I just reach for my essential oils and rub them on and uh, I'm able to go and face my next face the day and help my next, next patient and things like that. So that's a little bit of 
how I became a veterinarian and a little bit of how I kind of started to get into the essential oil world. Now I'm acupuncture certified, um, things like that. And I use a lot more of those modalities in my practice these days. So. Okay. Well, you answered about five questions in one there. So thank <laughs> <Sorry>. you. <laughs> um, so someone who's totally new to this, what does, how does one administer essential oils to one's human self as mm -hmm. well as to one's dog? Awesome. So that's a really good question. And it's one that's really commonly asked. And I, I'm so glad you asked that because that is kind of a great starting point. So a lot of people are like, okay, well, how? Um, the cool, so essential oils are um, aromatic, you know, volatile aromatic compounds that are about 50 to 70 times more potent than herbs. So they're very, very strong. And so you do have to be really careful when you're using them around um, dogs in particular. So okay. what does volatile mean? It means, um, it means it evaporates quickly. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and so it, they aren't like greasy, like you would think of like olive oil or things like that. If you put them on your skin, um, if it's a pure oil, it'll absorb into your skin and into the bloodstream very, very quickly. Hmm. It usually reaches all the cells in the body within about, um, some people say a minute, it's usually about 15 minutes for full effect. So it's pretty amazing that they're actually lipid, lipophilic, so that mm. fat loving is what that means. And so you can apply it to your skin and it absorbs into your skin and into the bloodstream very quickly, um, which is very different than, you know, say antibiotics, which are water soluble. And so you, you ingest them, you know, it takes um, several, really several um, doses of antibiotic to reach a, a good level in your bloodstream mm. to be able to fight off the bacteria and they cannot get in, into the cells because um, it's water soluble, which is why intracellular bacteria, anyways, I could go on this whole spiel about that, but, but I'm getting a little too sciencey probably. So give, give me an, give me an example of, uh, let's say that you as a human are feeling anxious. Yes. What essential oil would you grab? Where on your body would you put it? How, how many drops? Absolutely. Like, so the picture. there's three different ways that you can apply, that you can use essential oils, the three most common ways. One is aromatically. And so for something like that, what you can do is you can take a drop of essential oil, you know, put it on your hand, rub your hands together and just inhale. Um, and because of the way the olfactory system works, it actually will go, you'll inhale it, it'll go into your limbic system. Um, and through your olfactory lobe and actually it, like it's kind of, it'll trigger memories and things like that. So, so that's one thing that people can really associate with. Like you think when you smell a, a apple pie, you might think of your grandma, that kind of a thing. So it kind of triggers memories like that, but in, in really positive ways, um, in general with essential oils. So, so, um, so you can use them aromatically and a lot of people will put oils in the diffuser, in a diffuser. So I, I have a diffuser um, that I run every once in a while. And what you'll want to do for diffusing around dogs is make sure you have a water-based diffuser and you're only using three to four drops at a time. A lot of people want to put like 20 drops in there because they can't smell it as strong. But remember that dogs have Mill hundreds of millions of more olfactory receptors in their noses than we do, which, which you know, as you know, they have a great sense of smell in. So they're mm -hmm. very sensitive to, to smells like that. So you only want to start with just three to four drops in your diffuser. So that's one way, aromatically. The second way is topically, and this is what I primarily use on myself when we were talking about my headaches and things like that. And um, there's different types of oils. You can actually put a drop on your hand and rub it directly to um, the area of concern. Um, I usually recommend people dilute it, d dilute essential oils to about a, a 2%, 1 to 2% dilution, which means one drop of essential oil per 150 to 100 drops of uh, carrier oil, which, you know, here in the U.S., that's about a, a teaspoon to a tablespoon of carrier oil. Um, and then you can actually What are use some that good topic. carrier oils? Yeah, fractionated coconut oil is a great one. Um, it doesn't have a smell and it's, or it's a liquid. Um, some people use olive oil or jojoba oil. Um, um, avocado oil is really good or grapeseed oil. Even though people, argan oil. Argan oil is excellent as well. It's a great one. And that's also really good for the skin and coat as well. So these carrier oils have their own benefits, right, as well. And so very moisturizing, especially mm -hmm. when we're dealing with skin issues with golden retrievers and things like that. So, um, 
So you can do that and apply it topically directly to the area of concern. Or if you're wanting a more emotional benefit, say you have a dog that really doesn't like thunderstorms, you can either diffuse it or you know, put a drop on your hands and then um, rub it along their back, pet them like normal, because that's how they're used to being petted, um, and, and, or on the inside of the ears, kind of where their skin is on the inside of the ears. So that's another, those are some pretty common ways we use oils topically. The third way that you can actually use essential oils, and this really, really matters, um, it really depends on the brand that you're using, unfortunately, because there's a lot of, well, as, as you know, you know, there's a lot of supplements and foods and and things out on the market. The uh, pet pet industry is um, a very lucrative business. And um, so there's a lot of people jumping on board, um, trying to, you know, with marketing, making money and things like that. And so trying to find a high quality essential oil is really, really important. Um, and so there are certain oils that you actually have, that they're safe for internal use on them. You can actually see the supplement facts label on them, just like you would with a nutrition label for a treat or a, a pet food. Um, and those ones you can actually use internally, mix it with food, put it in a capsule, give it like a pill, things like that. If you need some more intense, um, you know, if you're, if you're actually trying to um, really address a specific issue. So I, but I would recommend you work with a veterinarian or someone trained in essential oils before you mm -hmm. ever tried that. So and so what are the, some of the must have essential oils that should, that, you know, should be in every pet parent's uh, cupboard according, according to you, if you could have your way? Oh, I think everyone should have all the oils personally, but. <laughs> and how but many, when you say all the oils, what, all how of many the oils, about? all of the oils. So um, there are, there are some really common ones that I use in my practice and that I think everyone should have on hand. They're really good just to have you know, that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis, um, or, you know, you just want to have on hand in case something comes up because you don't want to have to necessarily um, try to buy one and wait three days for it to come in those sorts of situations. A uh, perfect example of that type of one would be like our digestive blend. There's a digestive blend that's really amazing. So when you think about dogs and you think about digestive issues, you really don't want to have to wait when you're dealing with a digestive issue. You want to make sure that you're, you're addressing it right away, whether stuff is moving along too quickly or not quickly enough, or maybe they're vomiting. Now, always remember that if your dog is vomiting for more than 24 hours, that is a veterinary emergency. You do need to take your dog into a veterinarian in case they ate something they weren't supposed to and need to have surgery, which my puppy just had. Um, just about a week ago. So um, <laughs> they tend to eat things that they're not supposed uh -huh. to sometimes. So um, the digestive blend is one excellent one. Um, lavender is another one that a lot of people are very familiar with. Um, again, this is very commonly adulterated essential oil. So you want to make sure you're getting a very good brand. Um, and this one is good for all things calming, whether it be calming of the nerves, calming of um, the skin that's really irritated. It's very good for soothing the skin um, and that sort of thing. Um, another oil that I love, 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 and a lot of people in, that are listening to the podcast right now is, are prob have probably heard about it, um, is frankincense. So a lot of people have heard of Boswellia um, as a supplement, but it also is an amazing essential oil that can help with um, aches and pains and joint support and all around um, just basically just keeping the body normal back to homeostasis. So it's a really, really good one, especially as dogs get older um, and all the things that senior dogs run into. Um, let's see, Copaiba is another really good one. So Copaiba is uh, from Brazil and it is, uh, it is very high in beta caryophylline, which is um, a cannabinoid basically. So you think of CB, a lot of people know about CBD oil. CBD oil acts indirectly on the endocannabinoid system and copaiba works directly on the endocannabinoid system. So I actually often like to use those together. Mm -hmm. um, and, but copaiba is wonderful for supporting the heart and the digestive system and the, um, the urinary tract, very, very good for the urinary tract very good for um, skin issues and is very, very calming as well. So it's kind of a great all around oil to have on hand for mm -hmm. sure. And it is a lot, it's actually a little more inexpensive than um, CBD oil, which is also really good. 
Um, let's see. We talked about digestion. We talked about um, calming. We talked about um, joints. We talked about um, oh, frankincense and copaiba are also really, really good for the, ner the nervous system, um, so neurological system. And then the other thing you want to do is really support the immune system. And we have a really amazing protective blend as well that's very, very supportive of the immune system. Um, so, you know, we think about all the things going around and in the news these days as far as why we need immune support. And uh, that's a great one to have on hand. And the cool thing is we can use it for people as well as mm -hmm. our animals. And then, you know, managing stress is really important too. So I know I talked about that in my own story, but what people don't realize is that the stress that they carry with them on a day-to-day -day basis, they actually bring it home and their animals can feel that. So, you know, your dog comes up to you and they're like, I don't know why you're stressed out, but let me take that from you. And they kind of take it upon themselves. And so a lot of the things that we see in veterinary medicine these days um, are actually like, as far as disease is actually chronic accumulation of stress. And if we can address the stress in our own lives, it'll decrease the stress in our animals' lives. And if we diffuse something, it benefits everybody in the whole home. So we do have a lot of really great anti-stress type oils um, that are very calming. Um, we have very grounding. We have a grounding blend that is that I use on every single animal, um, and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, so those are just a few of the ones that I probably use the most. I could probably go on and on about all the different ones that I like, but those ones are probably pretty good. Oh, the respiratory support. I really like cardamom for respiratory support, which doubles as digestive support as well. So the cool thing about essential oils that I've learned to just embrace and love is that they don't have side effects. They have side benefits. So if you use cardamom to help with your respiratory tract or your animals, your dog's respiratory tract, you're going to get a side benefit of also helping their digestive tract because it's also really good for digestion. And so you, uh, you work with the brand doTERRA, right? Mm -hmm. And so if someone goes to your site, they go on the, on the shop portion there, they'll be redirected to the doTERRA site. Where yeah, they can so they can, they can do that. And if they're not sure which oils or you're not sure which oils, um, that you need to have for your particular animal, feel free to hit that contact button, let me know, um, shoot me a quick email and, and I'll reach out to you guys and um, help, you, help you figure out the best thing for you and your animal. So can you tell, are there any, you know, especially memorable or touching stories of you having used, um, you know, an essential oil on a pet who is going through a rough a rough patch in one way or another and you know came out better as a result can you can you paint a picture of something like that for the listeners absolutely so um let's see there was how oh, i have so many how do i even pick one i should have like looked up a couple of them that were particularly significant um yeah so there's there's this one uh one dog in particular, I actually have helped a lot of dogs with um, with seizures, actually. So seizures really, really common in dogs, more common now than they used to be. Um, I could get into the whole reason why I think that is and nutrition and all that fun stuff, but we're not, that's not what this particular podcast is about. You'll just have to have me back for one of those. Um, but so this dog had seizures pretty much his whole life and um, was on max dose, maximum doses of um, anti-seizure medication mm. and can you hear my dogs barking right now <laughs> yeah sounds like they need some oils <laughs> they're they're mad because the neighbor just came home probably um so so he was on the maximum amount of anti-seizure medication and was still having seizures on a regular basis so we were able to um do some acupuncture on him we were able to um, start giving him essential oils and he was on frankincense and copaiba internally mixed with his food so two drops twice a day in mm. his food and um, just ate it up loved it and then um, we actually took away the frankincense and he's just on copaiba now and doing really really well and we use um, the grounding blend topically um, as needed and the great thing about these oils is if he did have a seizure you can actually use them during a seizure to help them shorten the length of the seizure so they'll come out of it quicker um, and 
not have that aura mm -hmm. quite as much. So that was a really cool case. He ended up getting a little bit of um, some elevated liver enzymes as well as a result of the medications he was on. And so we were able to use some herbals and some additional essential oils like juniper berry and our detoxification complex to help kind of um, clean out the liver and within two weeks his liver enzymes were back to normal with just a little bit of extra support naturally mm -hmm. so that was a really cool case um, I've had other really amazing cases um, there was this one basset hound that had um, uh, bladder stones pretty large ones actually I actually kind of recommended that she have surgery um, but the owner didn't want to do that and so they wanted to try natural things first we changed her diet we added some juniper berry and copaiba and some detoxification complex as well as some herbs and this dog within a couple of months no more stones like mm. didn't have to have surgery we saved her from having to have surgery she was an older dog um her owner was over the moon still has her on like a homemade diet um and she is doing absolutely wonderfully so really really cool cases like that so i mean i could go on and on about all the different cases that i've had for every different kind of mm -hmm. um disease and that sort of thing but there are natural options whether you want to do an integrative approach and include it in with your Western medications, or you want to try an all natural approach first um, and then include Western um, modalities as well. There's just a lot of different things that you can do that works best for your lifestyle, for your dog, for, um, for, you know, what you're wanting to accomplish in any particular scenario. Now, I still have a magical essential oil that will keep dogs living to be 30 years old yet, um, but <laughs> we can keep them comfortable in their senior years and that sort of thing, so. So you talked a bit about fi finding a quality brand because you know, I come from mm -hmm. the supplement nutrition space mm -hmm. and you know, it's just, you know, you get to a point where if you if you're experienced enough you can look at the label and within five seconds know whether you know i would me personally would actually buy that product whether it's a human product or a dog product but you know i think it takes a lot of experience to to get to that point um, and a lot of kind of insider knowledge so what do you look for when evaluating a a brand yeah so that's a really good question too so and this goes with not just essential oils but like you said with nutritional supplements with herbs um with if you're doing you know cbd oil anything like that you really need to look at the quality control um is is probably the best and easiest thing to look at so with essential oils um if they don't have a copy of the test results you don't have to necessarily know how to read the test results but know that you know what what are they testing for um you know how often are they testing is it every batch or is it just once a year or that sort of thing what kind of um sanitation do they have in their uh quality labs and things like that um, what kind of testing do they do after they package it to make sure there is any contamination during the packaging process? Um, but the, so, so a really easy thing to do is to say, well, what, what kind of testing do they do and can I get those results? If they're hiding those results from you, if you ask about it, then they're, they're, that's, I would question that right away. Um, good supplement companies, good herbal companies, Good essential oil companies will provide you those test results because they have nothing to hide. Um, so that would be the first thing. The other thing is, like I said, um, with the sup that look for that supplement fax label. Um, usually, adulterated essential oils cannot be used in internally. They're more like perfume grade essential oils. They have a lot of other junk in them, and those are the ones that can be really, really toxic to animals. So if it says for um, for aromatic use only or for topical use only those would be ones to stay away from for sure um, the um the ones with that supplement fax label is going to help you a lot that's because that means that they've gone through the the testing and they meet all the fda standards for all of that so um now that being said essential oils are not fda approved or anything like that they're considered a nutritional supplement just like 
um, nutritional supplements. <laughs> so, mm. so they aren't highly regulated, um, which is why there's a lot of junk on the market today, unfortunately. So that being said, if you want to be sure you're getting the, the, the best stuff, you can always just use doTERRA essential oils, which is what I recommend and what I use. So. Yeah, I mean, so I'm on the doTERRA site right now, and mm -hmm. you know, there's definitely a, a big, long description of around how it works, but most of the things you mentioned there are not listed. There's no supplement. I'm on the Copaiba one, for example. So there's no supplement fact panel. There's no... There's no yeah. test or anything else. I'm not saying the company wouldn't provide it, but it certainly isn't on the website. And, you know, I'm trying to be right. as flexible as possible to, to, to someone. So what, how would... So you actually look at the bottle. So the, the supplement facts label is actually on the bottles of the essential oil. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at this, there's a lot number. So just like with your supplements, there should be a lot number somewhere on the package. Um, so you can actually go to source to you.com and that is the third party lab results. So they actually have a third party lab test these, um, they, they test them internally, but they have a third party lab do that and they publish all the third party lab that isn't affiliated mm -hmm. with, uh, with the company or anything like that. So yeah. if you go to source to you.com, you can type in that lot number and actually get the results for that particular lot of essential oil. They do that's, it. Batch yeah, batch. that's super, super helpful to know that it, it'd be nice if they had that on the website because there's no supplement fact panel and there's, there's no, you know, lot number or any test results. Right. So right. the lot number is going to, you know, depend on which bottle you get. So that's right. Gonna be, so that's going to be yeah. very specific to that. So okay. it's hard to have that like on a general website, I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We have it on, we have it on our website. So well, yeah, so no, it, and it so it depends on like how large, the, you know, how large the company is as well. Is, sure. um, like how, like I know the CBD oil I use, they, it's a very small batch, um, the way they do it. And so they actually include the testing results in the actual package um, when you purchase the oil. So you can actually op open up the CBD oil and um, see, you can actually see the test results of that particular batch of of oil so mm -hmm. that's kind of neat but it's a small batch small company so just pair is a much larger company got it so what are some um we we covered uh, you know a little bit about the quality what to look for in a brand what about where else can people go wrong in terms of the administration so what i heard you say was you know giving if you if you're going to use a diffuser people often use too much yep. so mm -hmm. maybe can you speak a little bit about the potential dangers of that and or other ways that you know essential oils gone gone bad gone wild kind of thing <laughs> yeah uh, essential oils gone wild right. that's so funny we should have a that should be a tv show for sure maybe we'll, maybe <laughs> i can actually think of a couple of crazy ladies that would probably be really good for that what we, maybe maybe the title of this episode should be what to do when essential oils go wild or essential <laughs> So, so the main thing is to not use too much and to keep in mind that they're incredibly potent, 50 to 70 times more potent than herbs. So in your diffuser, three to four drops max at a time with a water-based diffuser. Topically, make sure you're diluting the essential oils. So I've seen um, the adverse reactions that I've seen have been because people are using an essential oil that's either adulterated or there are a couple essential oils that are metabolized very slowly by dogs tea tree oil being one of them. Um, and uh, winter green is another one that you want to be really careful with as well as birch. Um, so those three I would stay away from with dogs. Um, and then just making sure that, that you're diluting it. So, so whenever I see um, like essential oil toxicity, if you want to call it that, it's probably, it's because people have put, you know, half a bottle of tea tree oil on their dog to try and get rid of fleas for example without diluting it and we're talking you know you know that's like a hundred drops of essential oil and really mm -hmm. you should be using like a fraction of a drop total on your animal for things like that so that would be the thing the most common thing that mistake that people make and um and then using those oils that are a little bit more on the toxic side like tea tree oil which drives me crazy because it is a little bit more toxic and yet if you go to a pet store you can see shampoos with tea tree oil in them you know flea medications with tea tree oil in them and all these things and i would just stay away from all of that stuff because you don't know the source of the tea tree oil and you certainly you know now that you've listened to this podcast you know that tea tree oil is actually a little bit 
slowly, very slowly metabolized by dogs. Mm -hmm. And so some dogs are fine with it, um, but there are a few dogs that are very, very sensitive to it. And you don't know the concentration that's in those products either, so. No, exactly. Got it. Are there any, um, you know, if the diffusers, I guess a good example. So are there, if a, a listener is out there looking to kill two birds with one stone and get some essential oils for themselves or their family and their pet all at once, what would be like the three essential, essential oils? To get? <laughs> three best essential oils. That you can um, use kind of on a, you know, just on a, on, on a, everything. on a daily basis. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's the, you know, the, the spinach and the broccoli and the omega-3 of essential oils. You can't <laughs> like, you can have them every day kind of thing. Well, I, I always, we always have this thing that, um, you know, when in doubt, get the frankincense out. And so if you're not sure, because frankincense has over 182 chemical constituents in it, you can pretty much use it for everything. And it's very, very safe. So frankincense for sure. Um, and then I, I mentioned Copaiba already. It is probably my num number one most used oil and I use it a lot on myself as well. So that would be another one. Um, and then it kind of depends on what else is going on. A lot of people really like lavender. Um, so that would be another really good choice. Or if you're like, mm, lavender is a little bit too girly for me, um, you could use something like Roman chamomile or cedar wood as like a calming oil. And cedar wood also benefits, um, you know, has the side benefit of, uh, being a kind of insect repellent as well. So that's another one that you can use. A lot of people mm -hmm. use it with, uh, in their natural flea remedies and things like that. Okay. So I know I just gave you five, but. Well, that's right. So I heard, <laughs> I heard frankincense, copaiba, um, lavender, and, cedarwood. and or chamomile and what sandalwood? Or, or cedarwood. Yeah. Cedarwood. Cedarwood. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And you have a bunch of resources on your website. So what are some of the more popular ones and the more helpful ones or ones that so would be a lot of, I do have, yeah, I have um, several webinars available for general information um, on essentialoilvet.com. Um, if you, and I do have a learning center that I just got up this last year, um, a few months ago called, um, so the website for that one is essentialoilvet.com forward slash learning. It's a teachable site. And probably my most popular class on there is the Happy Healthy Dog Challenge. It's a seven-day course. You can, you know, cram it all into one day if you really wanted to. But it's a seven-day course that goes through the basics of keeping your dog happy and healthy throughout their lifetime. Um, from nutrition and some supplements that I recommend, as well as, um, you know, um, exercise and uh, you know, decreasing stress and increasing or decreasing toxic load in your home, uh, joint health, ear health, dental health, like we cover all that stuff over the course of seven days. Hmm. Um, and that is a really, really fun course. And you can get that at essentialoilvet.com forward slash learning. And um, so those are probably my biggest things. And then of course, you can always join the membership group, which is really popular. It's a subscription group. It's only $10 a month, super affordable. And I go live in there weekly and answer everyone's questions about whatever nice. they want to talk about. <laughs> How many members are in there now? We have about, I think, 1275 right now. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Nice. And your Instagram got about 16,000 or so followers. Yep. yep. And then my main business, Essential Oil Vet Facebook page has Oh, I think 117,000 or something like that following me on there. So, and I go live there once a week, but it's more, much more general information. Um, you know, if you're just kind of wanting to like taste and see what's going on. <laughs> Got it. So what, what haven't we learned about essential oils that you could share before we wrap up here? Um, I think we pretty much covered everything, like how to apply what essential oils are, uh, when to use them, when not to use them, which ones not to use. Those would be, you know, those, th those key ones. Mm -hmm. um, and then just, you know, sometimes I say this and I, I really don't mean to offend anyone. So hopefully I won't offend anyone. Um, but with dogs, you have to use common sense. And with essential oils, you have to use common sense. So use a little bit of common sense. If you're not sure, ask. Um, I'm around, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, feel free to send me a message. Um, I, I really don't want any animals to ever get hurt, but I've helped so, so many animals using essential oils that I can't not shout it from the rooftops how amazing they are, so. 
and they've totally changed my life as well. Great. Well, thanks so much for sharing your passion definitely comes through and I'm sold on essential oils and, <laughs> and uh, you know, I learned a lot this myself. I think our listeners did too. So anything else you'd like to share before we sign off here? No, thank you so much for having me, Tim. I just want to honor you and what you're doing in this space. Um, I think it's really needed and I'm so, so honored to just be a part of it. All right. Well, thank you so much. That means, that means a lot. Really appreciate it. So Dr. Janet Rourke, Essential Oil Vet dot com on instagram at essential oil vet and on facebook with her membership group at eo vet membership with dr janet rourke thanks so much dr janet and uh see you on the airwaves